All right, everybody. Good morning and or afternoon, depending on where you're tuning in from. Welcome to the latest episode of TGIF, aka Thank Goodness It's Fortinet. We host a new topic every week on all things Fortinet every Friday. And that's at 1 p.m. Eastern Standard Time or 10 a.m. Pacific Standard Time. Today we're going to be covering 40 Mail 101. And before you ask, yes, I am recording today's session. And again, yes, I will be sending a link to of the recording afterwards to everyone who's registered for today's episode. Just a quick introduction for myself. My name is Dana Mead. I am excuse me, part of the new exclusive networks team here in Miami. My focus is sales and business development. I will put up my contact information in the chat box as well. If you have any questions about exclusive networks, services, questions, need quotes, comments, concerns, whatever it is, definitely let me know. I'm happy to help. So just a quick a couple quick housekeeping items before we get into the content today. Uh, just take a moment to check your microphone, and if you're not currently muted, please do so now. We like to try to avoid any and all background noises that are distracting if possible as David covers today's session. Uh, so, But we do like this to be interactive, so if you do have a question and you're comfortable speaking up, we love it. Please do so. Ask questions. Um, we definitely encourage that. But if you're more comfortable staying quiet and just popping up questions in the chat or the Q&A, um, that's great too. I'll help field questions as part of this uh, webinar goes along. So uh, in the background uh, with me, I have an engineer as well helping to answer questions, but David is also happy to discuss questions uh, during the presentation as well. So don't be shy. Um, so thank you for everyone for taking part in the polls. Let me go ahead and post the results because we want to see what our audience looks like today. So we got a lot of people. But we got no noobs today, which is very cool. <clears throat> Most everybody's been with uh, Fortinet for, you know, at least three years or more. So that's really exciting. Um, got a good uh, selection of authorized silver, gold, and platinum. So everyone across the board. And uh, looks like we're getting good um, attendance through email invitation and colleague referrals. So that's really exciting too. If you have a moment, please stay tuned after we finish the webinar. Just for a moment, I'm going to post a really quick uh, exit poll just to get your feedback on the delivery and content. We're always looking for your uh, thoughts as far as the webinar's content, how it's delivered, the topics that we choose. We really love to get your feedback. And we want to develop content based on exactly what you tell us you want to see. So if you can stay tuned for just one minute afterwards, I will post that and we would love to hear back from you. All right, so let's talk a little bit about exclusive, who we are and what we do. Uh, we are Fortinet's, oh, sorry, let me actually stop sharing the results. Let me pull that down. All right, we are Fortinet's number one global distributor. We have over 62 offices worldwide and a global deals desk. They can help us handle even the most complicated international deals, logistics to almost anywhere in the world, plus configuration, staging, and tagging. We also, we primarily focus entirely on cyber and cloud security solutions. Uh, responsiveness is a big thing that we like, uh, that we're very proud of ourselves about. We have rapid turnaround on quotes, technical advice, configuration, sales support, everything. We also have a boutique style value add distributor model. No more 1-800 numbers and email aliases. You have direct contact to all the resources that Exclusive Networks offers. And next up to the next page. Thank you so much, David. We combine specialist value adding technical and marketing support with the volume and reach of a global distributor. We have extensive pre-sales and post-sales support that help you build qualified leads and close those deals. Fortinet NSC certification training, <clears throat> excuse me, we can offer this in group one-on-one -on -one trainings in person or online, whatever best fits your needs. We offer a range of financing and leasing services to cover every IT project and requirement and technology. We also have a solid and growing list of vendor partners as well that are chosen specifically to integrate within Fortinet security fabric. And I think that's it. So just a real quick uh, introduction for our host, David Yang. He is our Senior Director of Support and Services. Now, David's been with Exclusive Networks, also formerly known as Fintech, for over eight years. And before joining Exclusive Networks, he's uh, Exclusive Networks as Supported Services. David held various positions, such as application developer, software QA, information technology, and systems engineer. So he brings a lot of knowledge and experience uh, to the table with us. So David, I'll go ahead and pass it along to you then. 
Thank you, Dana. Appreciate that. Um, hi, everyone. Um, thank you for joining us, uh, sharing the space with us on the Friday. Um, I can see that quite a few of them probably have been with us for, on TGIF for quite some time. And so I'm not going to go over too much about myself or the service organization what, what I'm heading with. So uh, you can see that we provide support and services in my department. So we do all those services that you can see on the slides. Uh, if you have any question, I'm not going over to too much detail on this either. So if you have any question, uh, feel free to contact me or contact Dana uh, or even post anything on the Q&A and we'll help you with those questions. So today's topics uh, is a 40 mil. Uh, 40 mil is actually is a pretty big topic itself. Um, just a long email itself, it's a, it's a big. So before I, again, like every uh, TGIF I have done so far, uh, before we jump right into the product technology specific, I would definitely talk about uh, 40 net security fabric architecture. So, uh, if you've been with us uh, for for the past a month or so, I uh, appreciate that. And also, you guys should be very familiar with the security fabrics. And you can see that on the picture, the email is a very, very important, essential part of the whole security fabric because email is very, very popular today. And security fabric, again, is broad, it's integrated, automated. So all of them play together with the uh, product and uh, technologies, uh, uh, having a Fortinet as a central part, working with a partner all together to provide uh, the, all the information you need to secure your network. So today's agenda, we're gonna talk about, briefly talk about the uh, email evolution and some tech, uh, terminologies. Again, if you are familiar with them, great. Uh, if you're not, uh, hopefully you enjoy a little bit. And then we're going to talk about the email security risk and why we need to have a email security filtering, scanning, detection technology and the products. And then we're going to talk about 40 mail introduction, just kind of high level understanding how 40 mail works. And then we're going to dive a little bit into the security features. This is the webinar, so it's not really a training session. However, I try to be a little bit more uh, technical as well as a little bit more high level understanding of the product technologies. Again, if you feel, if you feel any, any question, suggestion you have, feel free. Um, I definitely want to design the next TGIF series. So if you guys want to hear more about 40 mail or any other technology or product of 40 net, please send us feedback and we'll put it into the next series of a TGIF. Uh, if you want to be more technical, Great, I will def del definitely delve with into it more further and even give you guys some more hands-on or even demo kind of a understanding how the product works at configurations. So the email evolutions, right? Uh, I, I believe more people already heard about Opera and that. So uh, in, in 1971, uh, there's the first email system was created uh, within OperaNet. And actually there was a gentleman uh, working DAC uh, Digital. Uh, he actually sent an email. He was a, he, he was a marketing guy. He sent an email to, uh, um, to a group of people of customer of himself and then uh, actually did quite well. And that's probably the first spam email he sent uh, probably in the world too. And nowadays, uh, I believe everybody already have uh, quite a few emails. So in the, there's some statistics um, we, we, we pretty much receive about 121 emails a day. Uh, I don't know if you have more or you have less, but pretty much 100 emails is very common. And then after, after the, the simple uh, text-based email, there's a mine uh, coming up. So mine is a multi-purpose internet mail extension. So that one, uh, you can use all kinds, uh, different file types, such as uh, video, audio, uh, pictures, everything, HTML code, whatever that is. So that's what the minds read about. That's how popular today is for all the mind uh, type of email now. And then we have a, then uh, as you, you probably already know, uh, uh, there's a bounce email. So you, when, whenever you send an email out, you got a bounce that's called bounce email. Then you have a spam email uh, that's over the place, right? Or you receive junk, but hopefully you don't consider TGIF uh, uh, campaign as a, a spam and you all accept it. 
Um, then you, if you see some spam email, you can put in the blacklist and you can also create your own whitelist to never block certain email. Uh, just, just for fun, no, I don't know if you guys heard about, uh, I mean, or how, how the origin of the spam come from. Uh, just give you a quick understanding of oh, 1970. Uh, on the 1970, there's a Monty Python show. Uh, you guys probably all knew about that. There, wa there was a waitress uh, you reading a manual. Uh, that everything's regarding spam. So now in terms of that, so anything that uh, got abused or keep doing it repeatedly uh, of the something that we call it spam. So that's where the email spam uh, the terms uh, came from. Now, there's some terminology I want to talk about really briefly. It's like a POP, POP3, uh, the IMAP, IMAP4. That's, so POP is the original one, and POP3 is more enhanced one, and then uh, there is IMAP, IMAP4, uh, the SMTP, and enhanced STP or ESMTP, right? And there's a MUA, so, uh, there's a message user agent, and an MTA uh, message transport agent. So MUA main, meaning main, meaning that it user side of uh, such as application or web browser, and MTA uh, mainly talking about a relay agent such as a uh, 40 mail uh, setting up as gateway. And there's a mail server such as Exchange Server or even Google Mail. And among all those very important part is a DNS uh, domain name uh, system or ser server that you need to have correct or proper or authenticated MX record. That's mail exchange record. That's very important piece in the DNS in order for email to uh, pass through properly or to uh, appropriately. So we're, we're gonna talk about the email flow later on. Uh, just give you a quick statistics, some, some uh, pretty, pretty interesting information. So there's a, uh, in 2019, there's over, 293 billion of email per day sent and received, 293 billion. And uh, pretty much half of the world population use email. So, and, and all those people using email, uh, around 55, 56% people using mobile device to receive email. And 40, uh, another pretty interesting one is 40% of, 42% of American checking email they admitted they check email in the bathroom and 50% they check email on bed or in bed, right? And even nowadays, the social media, all right, a teenager using all those social messagings, uh, I am, Instagram, Facebook, but still uh, around 78% of teenagers still using email. And a lot of a business, business professional uh, prefer email than communications as, as a communication tools. Now, the best time to send email is uh, around 10 a.m. or between 8 p.m. and midnight. And the best day to send email are Thursday and Sunday. This is all statistics. I didn't make this up. I just did a Google search, right? So, and on 2003, uh, there's a spend act, can spend act. So basically, uh, uh, George Bush, President George Bush, they basically signed, a, signed a, the, the act that, uh, as a consumer, we have a right to stop uh, unsolicited email. So uh, all those uh, terminology, all those stats, it's just for fun and so for a brief understanding how to, what's the email today. So this is the email flow. So basically, if you can see that from one a person uh, try to send an email, uh, they sent to, uh, from, from, from a client side, they sent to a, a local email server, right? And then, uh, then the email, basically the email server will look at, like I mentioned earlier, the DNS records. So that's an MS record in the DNS server or DMS system that will indicate who is the relay. So that's MTA. So who's the relay uh, need to relay to the uh, recipient of the email. So the, the first one's looking at uh, the MS record. The 50 is the less number, which is the, higher priority to use. So they use that one as a relay example.net example as a relay MTA uh, to relay the email. This, this email flows, the, the diagram 
uh, or the flow itself is actually quite important. We're going to talk about the security afterwards, and you will understand why security is very important during those points, the relay from, from email um, sender to email server to email relay to and, and the end uh, to the receiver, right? Now you can see that there's a second relay, right? So the second relay is to the mail or could be the email server itself uh, on, the, on the recipient side. So there is, again, you need to look at DNS server MS record to identify that and it will send to the mail.example3.com. And at the end, uh, the recipient received that email. So that's the email flow. So during, we, we usually just consider the email send, email receive, but actually you can see that it went through a multiple, we call so-called hops, email hops or MTAs, or at the end to the email server then receive and receive it. Uh, along the way, there's SMTP or ESMTP is the protocol they use for sending email. The POP, POP3, uh, IMAP, they're basically for you to receive email. So POP, POP3 uh, usually is on the emails, uh, on the email recipient uh, email software or email tools, and IMAP usually used on the web browser to receive emails, right? So, so that's the email flow. That's so hopefully everybody have a, a quick understanding how the email works. So be, not just a sender receiver, but there's a multiple hubs that email need to go through in order to reach the recipient site. So the email risk. Um, so we, we can see that there's a lot of security risk. Uh, there's a lot of different statistics talking about different securities, security risk. So there's a malware, we all know that, the email malware, there's a spam, we, or we mentioned that. The phishing is a big one, uh, using social engineering to do phishing, to do spoofing, all kinds of things. Uh, to be honest with you, lately I, I noticed a lot of things uh, surrounding a spoofing impersonations. Uh, we, we will talk about this a little bit later, but I just want to address that. Uh, it's a, I think from my point of view, it's a big topic in, in the security world right now. Um, of course, uh, all those secure, security risks will cause a data loss. Uh, data loss and money loss. Money loss, not just because of data is lost, but also because of system downtime. Because if you lost, especially it's a widespread uh, email uh, security breach or something, then the system is down, the email service down, you need to recover all those emails. So the recovery is also considered part of the loss of the, uh, I should say the, the, the money lost, right? Phishing is a big one. You, we, we're gonna, uh, I'll show you some example of phishing and ransomware is a huge, uh, kind of quiet down a little bit, but still ransomware still continue changing um, and then uh, still around, so still need to be careful. Although uh, I think we all have a awareness now, but still ransomware is a big one in current uh, emails uh, security. Um, the, 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 the spoofing impersonation I'm talking about is uh, often referred to a, a term called business email compromise, BEC. So this is the, if you do some Google search, you will find out and um, from, 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 from early days till now, uh, according to the uh, FBI report in 2018, there's about 12.5 billion um, was, was lost because of uh, BEC, because the uh, spoofing impersonations of the email. So all, all in all, we have all kinds of tools, we can have all kinds of security systems, software, um, do a filtering, do whatever, I think most important things because the, the email um, spoofing, uh, hacking is continue going on. So it's a, it's a mouse and cat game, right? So I think the end user awareness and training uh, is, is a must. We need to, as a security uh, I want a practitioner or professional, we need to continue remind uh, ourselves as well as our relatives, our families, uh, business colleagues, associates regarding the email security, right? This is very important about awareness training. There's actually, there are actually quite a, it's a market over there. Um, there's a certain tools that help to uh, do some simulation to train user, to train 
uh, user as us is uh, especially in the business how to understand how to understand how to uh, spot uh, the possible email spoofing or phishing. Feel free for any questions again. So this is one of the phishing example. I believe most of people are already aware of this, but if you're not, I think it's a good thing to know. So if you look at this, there's a it's an email on the left hand side, Nick Young. Anyway, this uh, makeup name. So um, it's saying that hey, check out this invoice and pay for it. pay pay that invoice right away. Make a payment right away, right? So uh, the pe if people are aware, they click the link, they bring to whatever site that is, and you're gonna enter your username. You thought that's legit. You enter your username, password. They stole your username, and password, and then they know exactly what you what you have done doing on that. And then when you do the payment. You pay to do the wrong people. You don't even know. And on the right hand side, you can see that Netflix, just an example, right? So it's an update your account number, basically try to steal your account information, access information. So you click on that, boom, uh, you lost all the information, right? And then they can fake into your account and do whatever necessary. Right? This has happened a lot, especially um, a year or two years ago. It's kind of quiet down a little bit, but it's still going on. No, uh, I, I believe most of us already received this kind of email, phishing email all the time. Th this, is a, this is a very important one, especially for consumer from my point of view, um, because a lot, of red, uh, a lot of our friends and relatives, they may not understand this, right? Now, this is the impersonation, right? Um, we call it, we call a business email uh, compromise. So you can look at this, the first one on the left, right? So basically you can see that it's a domain one.com. Um, people usually just look at that and just say, okay, this is legit. So they just, okay, reply or do whatever. But if you see that they reply to, it's actually to different domain. So that's basically hijacking or spoofing the email address. Uh, those those techniques is well known in the public no network. Um, you, know, you you can even use a certain command to just uh, process this on, on the fly. We'll talk about this a little bit more later and to see how we can uh, uh, understand the technique and how we can filter them and how we can prevent it happen to us, right? Uh, but again, all in all, um, it's a mouse and cat game. So. People, awareness is number one. Training is the number one thing for us. Uh, then the second one, you can see that on the right, uh, bottom right, that's uh, Joe Doe. Then you can see that email is totally fake, but the name Joe Doe is a legit name, a legit name. So maybe uh, Stacy know Joe Doe, right? Joe say, okay, he's, this is our CFO. But if you didn't, Stacy didn't pay attention to the real email address, that's obvious. But sometimes we receive, let's say, hundreds, 200 emails a day. Sometimes we don't pay attention to those, right? So those are very, very important. Now, this is the one, it's actually a real case. I wanna, I wanna let you guys know, this is a real case, not fake, okay? Um, I see this kind of case quite often. So I don't know if you guys can see that, but do you know what the difference between these two email, right? The first one, you can see that it's coming from abed.com. So they, so the, the, the attacker, right, they can register an email domain account, ABED, which is very similar to abcd.com. So this person spoofed the email address, put a name in there, you think it's, a, you think it's real legit, then you wire the money over, right? That's it. Once you wire the money, the money is gonna be very difficult to trace, right? So the is, if you don't pay attention to the dom email domain, you miss it. And if you look at second one, it's even more interesting, right? So it's abcd.co. So I even got, I even got some complaints say, hey, how come the email address got corrupted, right? Because missing account. So the person, the user, the receiver did notice the email address different, but then didn't think otherwise, right? So it's .co is actually a legit domain. Right, uh, but it's not the one that's supposed to be sending you this information, right? So this is also a, a user awareness that is training you to be con constantly update. So as a as a security professional practitioner, we should always keep it 
keep in touch with the world to see what's going on. Hopefully this, hopefully this, this, this will help you guys, uh, help every one of us, right? So um, after talking about all those email risks, right? There's a, there's a lot of different type of email uh, protection, email security, filtering, scanning, uh, kind of a, a software or a hardware uh, technology out there. For email, it's actually been, uh, been in place for a long time. I, I'm not even sure if most people are even aware of there's a product from Fortinet called Fortimail. But uh, this Fortimail product is actually rated very, very high. It passed quite a few different, uh, or actually not just passed, high, high score on quite a few different uh, third-party uh, security software testing. Right? So Fortimail introduction, I'm going to be real brief. Um, hopefully you guys can have a, a high level understanding what's going on with the 40 mil. And then if you're interested, again, we talk about this more in more details. So three things I want to talk about in the 40 mil. One is operation mode. There's different operation mode uh, for 40 mil. And very importantly, there's a high availability for 40 mil. And then we're going to talk about security features, uh, try to see how we can counter or how we can um, uh, prevent uh, uh, fight against those security risks that we have. So there are three type of operation mode. The first one is gateway mode. So basically just like we mentioned earlier, it's MTA mode, right? So you put a 40 gate as MTA mode, uh, as a gateway. So all the uh, email in and out will go through the 40 gate, right? And then uh, reach to the recipient uh, email server or reach your own email server for you to receive. So all the inbound outbound mail goes to the 40, 40 mail as a gateway. And uh, for, so the 40 mail itself will have all those configuration profiles set up to scan, filtering, or quarantine uh, any, any uh, bad emails. Right. The, the, this is a good way because if you just solely rely on uh, the email server to do all those uh, security risk prevention or detecting, they actually will use a lot of uh, email servers uh, performance what email servers supposed to do. So email gateway is actually a very important piece, just like in your firewall gateway. Your firewall will uh, block, let's say 99%, 95% uh, of all the malicious uh, traffic. The same thing with a 40 mail uh, is that it's trying to do is to uh, filter out all those malicious traffic before reach out to your email server. So the second way, it's actually is a very interesting way is transparent mode, so bridge mode. So basically in a gateway mode, you need to change your DNS record. The MS record we're talking about uh, earlier during the email for if you still remember, the DNS, S, DNS uh, MS record, if you have deploy as a gateway mode, you need to change your DNS server's uh, MX record to point to the 40, 40 mail as a gateway, as a relay agent, right? Now, in the transparent mode, actually, there's no infrastructure. Well, I want to say no logical infrastructure change. So you don't need to change your DNS server MX record. You just deploy uh, 40 gay, uh, 40 mail as a gateway, as, as a transparent mode. So you have the transparent uh, transparently, the email still go through without any change, without any effect. But actually, it went through the 40 mail, all the security setting, profile, and configuration to detect any malicious uh, traffic in there. Right? So physically, you have a device, but logically, uh, the infrastructure doesn't change. Right? That's transparent mode or bridge mode. It's, this is pretty much the same way as a 40K. 40K also has uh, a routing, router, router mode or NHE mode as well as transparent mode. Now lastly, uh, 40 mail can also, uh, I, should, I should say, uh, perform as a server. So you can have 40 mail as server, um, then you can have a different storage, uh, different mailbox. There's a, uh, a list of, uh, a list of the uh, 40 mail uh, data sheet that you can see that in there as a different configuration for different type of business. There's a SMB, there's an enterprise, there's a larger enterprise or even MSPs. Uh, so you want to use uh, 40 mail as your uh, email server, that's no problem either, right? So the email server uh, for 40 mail is a full feature that provide you know, uh, POP3, IMAP, 
SMTP, as well as uh, its own database, and you can you can use a hardware RAID to set up differently to protect your uh, uh, to, to protect your email data. So those are three different uh, operation mode that you can use for 40 mail. Now this is the 40 mail features um, that is basically all re, uh, related to securities. So uh, I think most, all of us pretty much know DLP, data loss pre prevention or protection. So basically um, I'm gonna just briefly talk about DLP email archiving because that's a very uh, easy to understand. So uh, DLP basically, um, you have a watermark, you have sensitive data, then you can protect them to be uh, sending out to, to, the, to the different recipient or whoever recipient that is. So you can turn on the DLP to prevent any sensitive data or watermark uh, documents information to be sent it out. Um, email archiving is easy, so you, you can back up your email, right? You can back up your email into your own database or your own storage. As, as you wish, you can turn it on, on the, in the, within the 40 mil. Now, what I really wanna focus on the, the latest few uh, features, antivirus and spam, the content inspection. I wanna talk a little bit more about high availability and I wanna talk about identity-based encryption, uh, which is a very important part, a very heavy weight on the 40 mil site and very good. And then BC, email impersonation. Uh, those things I wanna talk a little bit more. I wanna emphasize sites more. But if you guys have any other question, feel free. Uh, again, the QA, Q, Q and A sessions. So antivirus and malware, right? So you can see that uh, I, I put a list over here. Uh, there's a signature and heuristics. So you can um, uh, this all this information, all this um, uh, virus malware things, uh, detection and screening and uh, and and uh, filtering all related to 40 guard. I mean, uh, I had a session earlier, uh, probably a few weeks ago, with I, I put a lot of emphasis on 40 guard. Uh, so if you guys are interested, you wanna hear more again, uh, definitely reach out to us for the recording. And then um, 40 guard is a, is, a, is, a, is a backend of all things about 40 net stuff, right? All the security, all the engine updates, all the signature, all the uh, uh, machine learning, AI, all ready to the 40 guard. So 40 guard provide a service behind all the product in front. So signatures all provided by 40, 40 guard and, and the heuristic, uh, the learning uh, and analytics part will be done uh, either locally or remotely. So it depends on the situation um, and uh, heuristic. And the, there is a local small set of uh, sandbox, small set of local residents uh, sandbox on the, on the 40 mil. And also there's 40 guard sandbox, you can send it over uh, for further uh, analysis. Um, CP, CPR, CPR is called Content Pattern Recognition Language. That's the uh, Fortinet's own patent um, the processing for data analysis. Right. So if you look at this, uh, this uh, antivirus and malware flow, so the email comes in, then uh, look at a 40 guard uh, antivirus uh, signatures. So that's signature first. Then if you detect, of course, uh, go, go, go to the, whatever action you want to take, quarantine, discard, reject. We, we could talk about this also later. Then if the signature is not there, they will look at a heuristic. We'll check the local sandbox or even check with um, uh, the 40 guards uh, send, send by cloud and to see for further analysis. If this detect there is suspicious for the suspicious traffic, there is uh, malware detected, then take the action. If not, go on to next. So the go on the next section would be there's a uh, basically called outbreak. So either malware outbreak or virus outbreaks. So when the when outbreak happens, meaning that there's a there's widespread of the virus uh, or the malware going on then 40 got detect that will send information to the 40 mail or 40 gate. They will hold the email for, in this case, hold the email for a certain time, right? And then after a certain time, we'll double check again to see if there are any signature update, if this, it is something going on with this specific email. If not, then release it. If yes, of course, there will, there's further action will be taken, right? So that's how the antivirus, anti-malware uh, work the flow works. So the anti-spam, right? We we talk a lot about spam. 
So um, there, there's a two different type of uh, spam. One is just a regular unsolicited uh, uh, email. Uh, just coming for individual user. Uh, they just, you know, is un unwanted. This is a very, this is a very interesting situation <clears throat> because uh, unsolicited email depends on, really depends on user, depends on the recipient. Some user uh, may want to see this kind of email, depends, right? Some user don't want to see those emails. Uh, so uh, the email to be decided as a spam or not, it really based on a rating system. So from time to time, you do need to go to your, uh, it could be, you, if, if you have an out, Outlook, right? You go to your Outlook and then look at your junk mailbox and say, okay, hey, this user uh, should not be in there. So for instance, some, for some legit user send you say, hey, how come you never receive it? So you need to unblock them. You need to move them out of the junk box so they, will, they won't be blocked from your email box. So that's the individual one. Of course, there's a bulk email. So they call UBE, right? So the bulk email, basically like email campaign, right? People's trying to sell certain things. Um, uh, e even TGIF is, is a bulk email because it's marketing campaign. Although uh, we want you to hear about this. So we send to the uh, wide variety of uh, audience for this. So people like to hear more about TGIF, they, they don't block it. Some people say, hey, I don't, I don't want, I never want to hear this again. You put in the jump box or you, to, you click on unsubscribe either way. So that's what is, how the anti-spam works in, in, a, in a very early or very basic point of view. So, and then there's a, there you have a 40 guy anti-spam or 40 mail spam, right? So the 40 guy anti-spam and 40 mail, uh, 40 mail's own anti-spam technique, they work together. They, they like an email, email spam, you just uh, email uh, the flow you just saw is basically look at a local one first. If the local one has, has not yet updated or has, doesn't have that enough power to understand what this is about then send to 40 guard for further analysis, right? And there's a session, there's a session and an application layer of uh, uh, anti-spam. So session layer basically just looking at some attribute or, or uh, based on rating of the certain IP connections. So look at IP address, where it come from and decide it is uh, it is a span or not. And the application layer, much higher layer, so it's actually looking at uh, content level. So looking at the email headers, email message body, and look for some keyword, look some something that certain uh, attribute or, or parameters in those contents and decide if it's span or not, right? So based on the session application layer, you create, you create your session profile to see what kind of thing you particularly don't want to see or block anything, you don't want to block, that's up to you. So you create a session profile and you create anti-spam profile uh, to pick your uh, scan option and pick your action, uh, uh, action profile. So the IP reputation is very important. We talk about outbreak protection. So if there's outbreak, again, similar to malware or virus outbreak, then it will hold that message for a certain period of time. And you can do gray listing, you can do blacklist, you can do white listing. And there's a URI filtering. So URI is, if you guys already know, that's, that's a web address or web, web uh, identification. So uh, certain email content will have those uh, web uh, identification in there. Or based on that content in the application layer, you can take certain actions. Then I want to talk about uh, a little bit about SPF and so-called DMARC, right? So SPF, so, uh, the term is called uh, Sender Policy framework, framework, right? So basically it's looking at DNS. So like we earlier we mentioned, we mentioned uh, the, the spoofing things, right? So when the UF, F, SPF uh, enable or activate to check the spam, they will, they will check a DNS record to see those email coming from those DNS record according to DNS, are they legit or not, right? So we will look at, a, we'll do a, a DNS record lookup to make sure it's legit, or authenticated, authorized uh, user coming from uh, those uh, DNS record. And DMARC, it's a newer one. It's called Domain Message Authentication Reporting and Conformance. So these, these are 
uh, even a higher or more deeper level of detection from the DNS information. So those will be all based on DNS. Uh, later on, maybe maybe next year so we, we can uh, deal with the DNS uh, DNS security too. So DNS actually is another big topic uh, we can definitely talk about, and this is very related to uh, e, um, the email uh, security. So next topic I want to talk about for email is a high availability. So high availability on the for email side, there's a two types. One is active passive, so mainly for felt over, and another one is called config only. So if you look at the picture on the left, that's uh, after passive that's felt over. So you have two email or multiple, well, actually primary and secondary uh, 40 mail server. So 40 mail gateway or whatever email server, then you can do felt over from one uh, out of order, the other one pick it up, but only work for active passive. Uh, not like 40 gate, 40 gate have active active to do low balance, low sharing. But 40 mail is only active passive. The other one's called config. That meaning you have a multiple, you have multiple 40 mail in place. So you can see that's from two to 25 40 mail um, a gateway or server in place. Then you bet you you usually have a low balance in front to uh, direct the traffic, uh, uh, to uh, aggregate the traffic and distribute into different uh, 40 mail devices on the back. So that's high availability. It's this is a very good because uh, now you have you have a better way of helping you to uh, uh, have a better recovery and less uh, cost for data loss. Now we're gonna talk about content inspection. Um, content inspection, basically, all the email comes in, right? We, we talk about session layer and application layer. So email come in, we'll do a pre-filtering. So basically, based on session, you do session layer, you base based on information that you already got based on signature, you look at a certain attribute, look at certain IP coming from, you do that uh, the first uh, pass of the filtering. Then later on, you can do look at a content, you can do further payload analysis sent to the same, uh, 40 sandbox. So there's a sandbox, uh, could be a sandbox hardware or software, or could be the sandbox on the cloud. So sandbox cloud. So that's a, that's one of the things that you can do uh, ba based on the content. You can do multiple layers, multiple uh, passes of uh, filtering and scanning for detection. Right? And you can also monitoring the, the whole uh, process. And there's, a, there's a something called CDR, as content disarmor reconstruction. So what it does basically, if you look at uh, the right-hand side of the picture, so basically, um, this could be a malicious email comes in. It could be some certain uh, um, URI or certain uh, uh, macro, certain format, file format in there that's harm to your, could be to the end user, to the recipient. What 40 mail would do is they will remove those, uh, uh, those high risk or those risky uh, contents, remove from them and, or send, put a way to neutralize the, the, the harming part of the, the email and then reconstruct it and then send it over to uh, the recipient. So the recipient will still see uh, no risk uh, content, but risk content is being removed or reconstruct. Um, and then of course the email itself will be tagged saying this being uh, already reconstructed. So recipients can receive, still receive email to see what the email is about but the harming parts are already being removed. So that's, that's what CDR is about. Now, we, earlier we talked about SMTP. We also talked about SMTPE for so enhance. So basically enhance meaning that you can send an email with a, with a SSL, uh, Secure Socket Layer, or TLS, Transport Layer uh, Security. So those, you can do certain type of encryption, right? Uh, so you can see that in the picture you send uh, email with encryption using the SMTP, SMTPE to send to the recipient. However, you can also looking at in the, in the center, between those MTA, we, we talked about, if you still remember the e email flow, it went through certain MTAs, right? The, the email, rel uh, the email um, relay agent, right? Could be multiple. The, the flow will show just two email relay, right? But 
could be multiple because it all, it all depends what it means. We don't know. That's again, all, all those in the cloud. So could be going through multiple MTAs. And within the NDA, between or among those MTA, there could be a plan text. They, are not, they won't be encrypted. Only when, only the encryption part will only be done when the last MTA relay the email back to the recipient uh, email server. So that's the part we need to keep in mind, meaning that the SMTPE is not encryption all the way. Among this MTA, they, might, they may be public and there's no control of it, right? So that's why we need this, uh, a different solution. We need an end-to-end -end solution. Uh, what FortiMail does is called IBE, it's identity-based identity encryption. What's identity-based meaning that if I'm sending an email, for instance, uh, in this example, it's called Alice. When Alice sends an email, you can configure FortiMail to say, okay, Alice is a very important people, right? He's, uh, she's the executive. So, Whenever she sends an email out, we're going to encrypt. Same thing, you can also look at the recipient side. The recipient side, let's say Bob. Bob could be a very important people, or you know, between the, you know the email between Alice and Bob is always going to be high sensitive, high priorities. Those kind of email, you better encrypt it. So you can set up in the phone email to encrypt email ever since the Alice sent it out the encryption will be done on 40 mail, right? So once the email's out, it's all the way encrypt. The MTA cannot decrypt because they cannot play the main in the middle to try to decrypt that email. They cannot do that. The, the email will be sent out with a public key as well as, uh, let's say, Bob's the receiver. He, he need to use his private key in order to log in to the 40 mail server or phone mail gateway to retrieve the message using his private key to decrypt uh, using, the, uh, using the Bob's public key from Alice. So if you look at one, so Alice sent it out to send an email to Bob. And secondly, 40 mail will use the, the, uh, uh, IP, the IBE and using uh, Bob's public key to encrypt the email, then send it over to Bob. Bob need to, they need to log, log in to the email uh, 40, gate, 40 mail to use a private key to decrypt the email. I hope I can I explain uh, good enough to understand at least this is very high level over, over, overview of understanding how this I, IBE work because only Alice and Bob can encrypt and decrypt the email. Nobody else can. So it's end-to-end -end encryption. So it's end-to-end -end security. So 40 mail has two types of uh, delivery for IBE. One is called pull delivery. And later on, we're gonna see there's a push delivery. So pull delivery, basically the, the email encrypt all the way and send it over to, to, let's say from Alice to Bob. So Bob receive it, but then Bob need to log in to the 40 mail to retrieve that email the email still resides, still resides in the 40 mail box, 40 mail itself or the email server itself. So that's called pull. So for Bob, you do pull that information over to see what's going on. So this, this, there's a step one, two, three, four, five, six, seven is basically um, to display how this pull uh, delivery uh, works. Then we have a push delivery. So encryption is still the same. However, the push basically is when Bob received the email, Bob log in to the 40 email uh, server or gateway, retrieve the email. The email will be retrieved and resized onto Bob's machine. So Bob can save that email into his own machine. The previous on the pull, basically the email still resides on a 40 gate or 40 mail box. I hope this is clear enough for everybody to understand. And again, any question, please feel free. Now, lastly, uh, this is the one I, I keep uh, emphasizing is a business email compromise. Again, according to, I, 
for FBI reports in 2018, the $12 billion loss in this business email compromise because spoofing and impersonation is, a, is quite difficult, quite difficult to detect by a human eyeball, right? So what Fortia does is they, they have two kinds of uh, kind of a prevention, right? Again, I cannot say this 100% and nobody can say security 100%, but there's two ways you can do, uh, try to minimize the risk. One is do manual, the other one's dynamic. So manual, basically you're saying, okay, let's say John Doe, right? Or let's say certain person. Uh, uh, it's very important, high executive. So I map his username to his email address. So when this person sends an email out, Right, you always need to match. When I receive the email from this person, the email address has to be exactly matched. That's what the menu setting is about, mapping is about. And there's a dynamic mapping. And you can see that there's, on the, there's a command line. I just wanna show you guys that you need to say, set impersonation analysis as a dynamic, right? But then before you do that, you, there's, a, there's a feature in the 40 mail, it's called mail status uh, service. You need to turn it on. For to 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 make the mail statistics service to be in a learning mode, so well, the 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 mail statistics service will start learning. It's a more more like a machine learning to understand the emails, which emails really are, uh, legit for certain user exactly the same. Then, well, after a certain time, we'll learn from that and we'll prevent or at least try to minimize the the risk of impersonation. So this is pretty much it uh, regarding 40 mil and I'm running a little bit over, but, but hopefully you guys have a good understanding how 40 mil work in general, right? And I, I'll definitely be happier to, to dive deeper into this if you guys are interested. Uh, so please fill out the, the, the form afterwards, the poll afterwards, and let me know if you want to know more about this or if you want to do a one-on-one -on -one session, I can do a demo for you or whatever that is. Uh, this is the 40 net resource, like I mentioned uh, in every TGIF. The first one I put in there is actually data sheets because 40 mil has all different kinds of configuration for different sites of uh, uh, requirement needs. So take a look at the, the 40 mil uh, data sheets and if you have any question, feel free. Other than that, there's a whole bunch of 40 net resource is available, uh, like Christian always mentioned, you can look at the video, you can look at the docs, it's all available out there. And to be honest with you, all the slides that I have introduced to you, it's all coming from all those resources, as well as my experience also. 40god.com is a very, very good website. We should all uh, take a look at from time to time. And that's it. And you feel free to contact any one of us. And if you have a question, take a question, feel free to send to support underscore US at exclusive-network.com. And your questions, suggestions, welcome. Thank you for sharing the time and space with me. And I hope to see you next week. Thank you. Thank you so much, David. Good job, good delivery, loved it. Um, everybody, I'm gonna be posting up the last poll, our little exit poll. We really, really mean it. Um, you know, we wanna get your feedback on you know, what we're doing here, what you want to see, uh, future content. Um, it's very important to us. We want to build our audience and, you know, add more value as a distributor. So you're learning, uh, what you really see in the, uh, trenches every day. So, um, again, I've posted my contact information, uh, along with David's, please let us know if you have questions. We're very happy to put together a personalized training session one-on-one -on -one or for a group. So don't hesitate. Let us know. And um, I'll go ahead and leave this up and we'll leave the webinar open for a few more, for a few more minutes while everyone is uh, checking out and answering the uh, exit poll. Thank you so much everyone for attending another great episode of TGIF. We hope to see you next week for our next episode and happy Friday everyone. Have a good weekend.